Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.co.uk with part two of this two-part tutorial showing you how to create a watchdog style video intro. Now if you followed the steps in part one, you should be looking at something like this. So let's get this thing finished off with some horizontal breakup and a quick LCD display effect. Grab your slice composition and drag it onto the new composition button in the project panel. Hit Ctrl and K to bring up the properties and call it Horizontal Breaks. This will create a comp that's the same size and duration with your slice comp nested inside it. Rename your slice comp layer Wave Warp. Duplicate it using Ctrl and D and name the new layer Block Dissolve. Now to create the random broken lines, find the Block Dissolve effect in your Effects and Presets panel and drag it onto your Block Dissolve layer. Then in the Effect Controls panel, set the transition completion to 95%, the Block Width to 270, and the Block Height to 3. Leave the feather at 0, and make sure that Soft Edges is switched off. Now this won't actually do anything until you change the blending mode of the layer itself, so move to the Composition panel and look for the Mode menu. If you can't see it, just hit F4 and it'll swap the composition column view. Now, modes affect how the transparency of layers affect any layers beneath. So, when you select Difference as the blending mode for the Wave Warp layer, After Effects looks at both layers and removes any values that are different. So, if I switch this mode to Normal and hide the layer underneath, you'll see the lines that we've created. When I set this back to Difference, and bring the Wave Warp layer back into view, these lines are then removed from the layer beneath, which is the effect that we want. Um, all of the effects in this tutorial are pretty flexible, so don't be afraid to experiment with different values to get the look you want. Alright, so our next step is to create the split screen twitch effect that you can see right here. Uh, to do this, find the Wave Warp effect in the Effects and Presets panel and add it to your Wave Warp layer. Obviously, the default values need some adjustment, so go to the Effect Controls panel and change the following. Set your Wave Type to Square, and set the Wave Height to 0. Then set the Wave Width to 270, the Direction to 0, and the Wave Speed to 0. Now move your CTI to the time where you want this effect to happen, and create a Wave Height keyframe to lock it on 0. Then hit Page Down once to advance a single frame, and create another keyframe of 107. Now if this doesn't seem to change anything, you may need to tinker with the wave width value a bit. Um, when you've got the split where you want it, move forward another frame and create a new wave height keyframe that brings it back to zero. If you want to duplicate this effect so that it appears in more than one place, just select the wave warp layer and hit U to reveal the keyframes, select them, and then hit Ctrl and C to copy them, and just paste them wherever you like. Alright, so we're on the home stretch now. Our last step is to give it an LCD monitor look. Now this isn't actually how it looks in the game ident, so you can skip this bit if you want to be true to the original. If not, let's carry on. Drop your horizontal breaks comp onto the new composition button and call it Pixel Effect. Add the Channel Blur effect, and set the Red Blurriness to 5, and this will give it a nice soft blue edge. Then grab the Grid effect, and drop it onto the Horizontal Breaks layer. Up in the Effect Controls panel, select Width and Height sliders, and change the Width value to 3, and the Height value to 6. Once you've done this, set the border value to 2, put a tick in the Invert Grid box, and then select Stencil Alpha as the blending mode from the drop-down menu. And this will create that pixel effect we're after. And then add the default glow effect. And there you have it. Hopefully by the time you see this, I'll have put the project file that goes with this up on my website at shortformvideo.co.uk, along with the text version of the tutorial which might be useful if you get a bit stuck with the videos. As always, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.